Aleluia! Aleluia! Well, welcome to SGG Church. And we would love to let you know that we are taping this right now on YouTube. And if you would just do me a favor, we need to get up to 100 subscribers. So if you have the opportunity, please get on. Uh, I think it's Google and you, you get on YouTube and subscribe. And then if you're a Facebooker, we need you to share this on Facebook. Just type in Seeking God Glory or Tracy Gantz. And we want you to just get out there and share this. We had about 400 people last week. And this YouTube is amazing. My son is doing this and he's editing and it's so powerful. You need to watch it, but we need to get that. We're like 36 subscribers. We could do better than that. So I don't know what happened, but this place kind of thinned out because maybe they saw me up here. So they go, uh oh, here we go. So what's going to take? What is it going to take for you to begin your walk in your journey? With Jesus Christ. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, hey, you know what? I've been on this journey for 10, 15, 30 years, 40 years. You know, why are we talking about this again? Your walk with God can start right now, right here tonight. Why do we wait so long sometimes? That's my first question. Why do we wait so long to come to Jesus? Why do we wait so long to come to knowing the saving grace of Jesus Christ? Why do we feel like we got all this time, spare time at our fingertips when we know as when we were born, we may look like infants, but honestly, as soon as you're born, you're dying. Your body is dying in, in, from the minute you are born. It takes a while to catch up, but when you finally get there, you know what, it may be too late to begin that journey. And that's what I want you to talk about tonight is what is it gonna take to start this journey with the Lord? Because for so many of you, you've been walking with them, but there's been loopholes. There's been places where, you know, there's been ups and there's been downs. There's been, you know, there's been times of, you know, where our faith is so strong that, you know, we can just walk through walls. And then there's times where we just, we start getting that doubting Thomas disease where we just start thinking, where are you at on all this God? And that's what I want to talk to. The people that are truly honest with me tonight are the ones that would say, you know what, there's every once in a while, there's a little placement for doubt. And why is that? If we are spirit filled believers, and when we accept Jesus Christ, we also accept the Holy Spirit into our hearts. We've got, like I said so many times, we have the heavens inside of us. And why would we fret the small things? Why would we even get worried about the big things? We're going to be talking about worry and anxiety and how this all fits in. Because some of us may feel like we're not worthy of that kind of unconditional love. We're not, in a sense that the world would say. The world wants to keep you oppressed and depressed and keep you so far away from that knowledge and that loving care of Jesus Christ. With everything that they can throw at you, the world will throw at you. But God gives us an opportunity to slow things down and understand that we can walk with the Creator. I mean, that should excite you. We can walk with the Creator, that He can lead us and he can give us strength when we feel so weak. He gives us strength. He took an ordinary, uneducated people that became disciples. I mean, Peter, you know, fishermen. Literally, Peter was somebody that had a temper. He had all kind of different things going on. But the thing is, God seen the good in that man. He said, you know what, if I could take somebody like Peter or Chuck or somebody like that that has the gift of gab, that, that if I can take and put a word in them, then think about the power of exhorting the word of God. I can do it in here or I can do it on the streets. I can go wherever I want because I have the confidence and I am an ambassador of Christ. I know who I am and I know who I serve. But I also know that I've got things that, that I've got to deal with. As I said before, we talk about it. Everybody deals with some type of insecurity. Some of us are concerned about our outside appearance. Some of us worry about our inside. Some of us worry about, you know, are we good enough? Are we, you know, are we doing our best? All these different things. And God is saying, you know what? Keep it down. Keep it down. 
I'll take care of this. I'll work through you. See, that's the amazing thing. Christ will work through you via the Holy Spirit. So why would we take and wait another second to operate in the gifts that God gives us? Why would we just put things off until tomorrow? Because there may not be a tomorrow. That's why we're preaching this message. For some of you in here, you haven't even began your journey yet. You know what your calling is. You know that you're anointed to do a certain task for the Lord, but you haven't even began doing it. And my question is, why wait? What are we waiting on? What is it going to take? So I've got a couple of notes I want to read to you, and I think it's a must read, and this is it. There's a great misconception, and you've got these in your notes, that there might be never be a right time. Well, we you know what? A right time for what? To give your life to the Lord? Probably the timing that you're expecting is when you feel up to it. When you feel like you are, you know what, in a good mood, a warm and fuzzy mood. Or it may be, you know, uh, a, a confession that you need to get it done and out with. And you, you would begin to feel like, you know what, I'll take it to God now. God's saying, you know, at your lowest point, at your lowest point, come to me. When we go to the streets and, they, and, and we talk to people on the streets, most of those people, if you ask them, they're at probably their lowest point and then it, along comes one of these uh, beautiful people that has a word of God, a word of knowledge to be able to express the love of Jesus Christ. That's the timing God is speaking about. You know what, no God, listen to this, no God, no protection. Why do you wanna walk? without the protection of God. Why would you wait and not have the protection of the Lord? If we say God goes before you, who can come against you? If you have no God, no belief system, that is not gonna do you a lick of good because you don't understand the fact that God will fight your fights. He will fight the vengeance. He will go and he will fight. You need to believe that God and trust God and even through the rough times, Tracy brought it up, even during the storms, we need to trust the Lord. And it's not an easy thing, church. It's not. You be, if you're honest with your, it's hard to believe in, in, in just trust. A lot of people say that I can't see it. Where is this God? Well, all you got to do is look all around you. God is everywhere. He's an all-knowing God. God knows your feelings. He knows the things that you're dealing with before you even say them. He knows it. But you have to understand that you need to come to him. He wants to hear it from you. That's why, why does it take uh, people a, a lifetime to come to Jesus? I want to catch people in their prime. I want to catch people when they're, when they're literally at, their, at, at a beck and call when they need an absolute 911 call of Jesus Christ. What is it going to take? What is it going to take? And when is that journey going to start? Listen, life, faith, and journey. Have you ever met someone who you thought had great faith? Have you ever really met that person that walks around with their countenance, their face is always smiling, there, there's always something about their presence when they walk in the room, and you look at them and you say, my gosh, they have such great faith. You can almost just feel it coming off of them and you just say, I want that. And God says, I want to give it to you. It's just a matter of asking and receiving. That's what God is a father. That's why we call him the Abba Father because we can ask of him and we can receive. The, the thing is, people are afraid to ask God for things, but we have no problem telling him all our problems. But when we, we're afraid to turn it around and ask, ask for his help, he'll, he'll bring it to you. He'll bring it to you. How will he bring it to you? He'll bring it through others. He'll use other believers. He'll bring it to you through the word. He'll bring it to you in a way that somebody will prophesize to you. Somebody will say, tell you those things that you know, and God is just confirming that through other people. It's amazing. First Thessalonians 5, 24, New King James. It says, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. You got to trust that if you call upon the Lord, this is his promise. 
if you call upon the Lord, you have to have faith and trust that he is going to bring it. God is good about his promise. He did, he's 100% correct, always. He always knows the right thing. You've got to trust that, you know what, even through the roughest time of your life, you've got to trust him that he's going to bring it. It says it in his word right here. Hebrews 10, 22 through 24, it says, Let us draw near with a true heart in a full assurance in faith. When you have a full assurance in faith, that means every bit of you, every fiber, every muscle, every, every cell, everything, your mind, your heart, everything lines up and you truly believe in that full assurance by faith that having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Some of you walked in here with sin tonight. Some of you walked in here with sin tonight. So when are you going to start your walk and journey with God? When it gets out of hand? Are you going to let it get to a point where it, you feel like it can't ever be taken care of? God's saying right here in Hebrews, let him sprinkle you with this, this it, like a pure water that would take and cleanse you from the inside out, from the outside in. God wants to take and wash you inside and out. I may do a thorough cleaning. What does that mean? Get rid of the sin. Get rid of the doubt. Get rid of the fears. Get rid of the anxiety. Get rid of the, you know, the mistrust. We've got to learn to trust again. I, I fight with that every day. You got to learn how to trust again. God wants to sprinkle you with confidence, literally with confidence. And there's nothing like having the identity of Christ. And when you have the identity of Christ, you have confidence in Christ. And that means that you can go on and you can do good things. You'll do greater things, the Bible says. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Everything in this verse, everything that we're speaking about is God's promise to take care of you. He'll take care of your conscience, your guilty conscience. He'll clean you. He'll get you pure. He'll get you back to a point where, you know what, you're standing upright and righteous with him. What does that mean? You're righteous with the Lord. That means you're right with God. That every word that you comes out of you is something that is a praise to Jesus. It's praise to God. It's praise to the creator. Not giving you know, praise to the creation, but to the creator. All of this is covered by the blood. Now listen to this. You don't want to waver. And everything he's talking about is a promise that is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. When we come together and I'm up here singing and I'm dancing and I'm getting into it it's we're all coming together one body coming together fellowshipping singing and you know what we're doing we're not wavering our faith at at that moment we're we're feeling something inside of us just with joy even if you came in here not feeling up to it before you know it you start seeing the smiles on your face from from this position i can see the smiles begin to come because god is working through us all you get caught up in it. You say, hey, why is their faith so strong? I want that. God said, I'll give it to you. Let me sprinkle your heart. Let me get the, your conscience clean. Let me let you operate with the Holy Spirit. Work with the Holy Spirit and God will do amazing things through you. Are you worthy enough? Probably not. But at some point, at some point, you have to realize that God thinks you're worthy enough to become a son or daughter of the Most High. You have to understand that, you know what, there is a, a, a Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says it well. It says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourself. You got nothing to do with it. The only thing that you have, that, that you have the ability is to have faith. And faith in, in the things that you can't see. That's a tough situation for a lot of us. Some of us, we need that tangible thing that we can hold on to and something that we can take and feel. And we, oh, okay, I guess now it's, I'm ready. It's time because I can feel the word. No, when it becomes part of you, when you feel those, the tingle that I'm talking about, that spiritual tingle, it's time. It's time to give your life completely and surrender over to Jesus Christ. 
It's a gift of God. It says right here, and not of works. Least anyone should boast. So if you've given your life to the Lord and all things are starting to come around, even through the bad times, even through the storm, we don't boast about it thinking that we had anything to do with it because you didn't. You didn't have anything to do with it. All you did was, you know what, you showed up and God said, you are worthy of my unconditional love. Acts 5, 15, 11 says, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. You know what they are? People that went before you and began to believe. And it's, it's not by works. Believe me, you can't work yourself into heaven. We've heard that a million times, but why do people keep on saying, you know what, I'll just keep on giving, giving, and then it'll be time. Then I'll give my life over to the Lord. I'll do good things. I'll change my life around. How are you going to change your life around without the creator doing the changing? You, how's it worked out for you so far on your own? You just keep on botching it up. But if you go to God, God will begin to do something through you. And before you know it, you'll just say, this is a modern day miracle. I stepped out of this Saul and I turned into a Paul and I'm starting to truly believe that I'm not a, of this world. I live in it, but I'm not of this world. I'm starting to think like Jesus, the mind of Christ. I want to do the right things. I want to help people. I want to serve. When my wife was up here doing an announcement, we're talking about, you know, getting together and having a benefit dinner. We're talking about, you know what, people coming together, showing the love of Jesus, and God is saying, now you get to be my hands and feet. That's when, when are you going to start? When are you going to start? When the, the banquet's over? No. Get prepared now. Get prepared. Ask God what you can do. What you can do for the person down the streets, the people on the streets. We got people making food and taking it out. They may not ever see these people. It doesn't matter. That's how revival begins. When we start doing things because we know that God is asking us to be obedient. When is your journey going to start? When is it going to happen? Listen to this. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about worry. Anybody in here deal with worry? You know, just a little bit. Why worry? Big question, why worry? If we know, again, that we've got the heavens inside of us, why would we worry? Well, Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says this. We have, uh, and, and before I read it, I want you to know that the Creator right now, for anybody that's willing to take a part of this, you take this verse, you take this verse, write it down, put it in your phone, and every time you begin to worry, you look at this and ask God to just, you know what, bring it back up again. Bring it back up, comfort me, God, because it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, I mean, be thankful. Let your request be made known to God in the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, minds through Christ Jesus. So, saying that, if you have worry, you've got anxiety, you have all this just ambition of negatives, why not turn it around and flip it around to something positive? Flip it around to where we know we have that identity in Christ. You have that identity in Christ. When you accepted Jesus, the Spirit of God came in you to remind you that you have dunamis kratos power that's inside of you that you can come up against anything. Anybody deals with mental illness. It's a tough thing. I watch people, I see people fighting something that is so hard to fight because it's something inside of you that just continues to drive you down and drive you down and drive you down. You need verses like this all around you. You need little cards of verses that talk about that you know what, you can have the mind of Christ. You can give up that anxiety, you can give up that mental illness and you can have the mind of Christ. You know what, it may sound impossible, but through Christ, all things are possible. And that's where we come to a, a standard of belief. Our belief system has to go up a level. Our belief system has to go up a level when we want to start living like Christ-like, true believers, spirit-filled Christians. Christ-like, we need to have that kind of a mindset. Worry is usually caused 
uh, uh, and, and, and it's by a feeling that you have that's out of control. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you have worry, your feelings be begin to take and overwhelm you. And when you are overwhelmed by worry and anxiety, it's hard to really hear God do it all. That's why you have to be still. That's why God says, be still, know that I'm God. How do you do that through the worry? You have to trust him. You gotta remember that you have a perfect seed growing in you when you accepted Christ. It's growing in you and it's taking root in your heart and it's maturing every day. No matter what it is that you're going through, it is maturing every day. And the only way that you can make this thing grow is by the word of God to continue to take the word and continue to have the word cultivate and be, let it begin to take root in your heart. It says here in Matthew 6, 31 through 34, therefore do not worry saying, what shall we eat? You guys know this one. And what shall we drink? And what shall we wear? For after all these things and the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows what you need. All these things. He knows what you need. He knows you, I need a new pair of Nikes. He knows I need a new pair of jeans. He knows I need this, right? No. He knows the provisions that he's going to provide for me to be able to go out and preach and teach the word of God. God, he wants to give you fresh manna every day. That means he wants to give you something fresh every day so you can go out and be strong in the word and be able to bring people to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for what tomorrow will worry about itself. Own things sufficient for the day, its own trouble. People, places, and things. The moment we put faith in Christ, everything changes, both inwardly and outwardly. In Jeremiah 29, it says that the Lord has plans for each of us, plans for a hope and future. Each day we struggle to say what? No to temptation. Our old ways of life, we want to say no to those things, but we are tempted by who? Not by Jesus but by the scumbucket devil who wants to take and destroy and kill us and, and do all these different things. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to sever your relationship with the Lord. But God is saying, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray, pray, pray. That is one of your weapons against this world is prayer. God gives it to you. And guess what? He will listen. It says right here, and he will listen. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me and you, with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. God makes a way. Let me say that again. God makes a way. There is not an area or detail in your life that God will not be willing to help out with. No matter how small, trivial we think it might be, ask God to show you his path and your relationship will begin to just grow and grow and strengthen and grow and strengthen. Whatever it is, you know, people will call me and say, Chuck, please pray for me. And, I, and we do. We pray. And when we come together in prayer, we begin to strengthen each other. We exhort each other. But guess what? We're praying to a God that hears and knows and will help you. And the thing is, he wants his people that are called by his name. And they want you to come and to just raise these prayers up to him. He wants to hear it from you. He's asking to hear your hearts. He wants to know that you're trusting and obeying, obedient, being obedient to him. That means that we just become complete. We surrender completely to him. And that's what he's looking for. People that will surrender. And you know what? Uh, I, I put this other note down here tonight, and I want you to hear this. It almost sounds kind of like advertising, this slogan. And it, you guys have heard this. God will make a way. God will make a way when there doesn't seem to be a way. And you always hear me say, but God, but God. Well, you know what that means is this. 
when people de are, are dependent on God and when people are asking for revival, uh, just renew faith, in, uh, they want to hear everything positive. But God, there's going to be times of tests and trials. It's not always going to be perfect. Look at, you know what, look at Job. You know, somebody said to me a couple days ago, it's like, you know what, or you're like a modern day Job. It just seems like wherever you go that you're fighting through trials and tribulations. But that's okay because I keep on reaching out to him. It started for me for a, a while ago. It began when I started trusting in him and knowing that I've got situations that I've got to deal with. I've got limitations that I have set up for myself. But God is saying, kick the door down, no limitations. I have all the answers. God has the answers. God is, you know what, God will make a way. Yep, it's a catchy little thing, but I'm, it's true. God will make a way. Our walk will be tainted by what? Naysayers. People that say there's no such thing as God. You're putting, you're weak. Have you ever heard people say that, you know what, you're really, really weak. You're, you're believing in this God. You're putting all your faith, all your trust in this God. And you know what? You're just weak. You're just, you're showing weakness. You should do it. You should do it on your own. You know what you say to them? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I'm weak because he's strong. I can do all things through Christ. What does that mean? That means that when God begins to work through you, you have the ability to take and just throw mountains into the sea. What does that mean? You have confidence. For anybody in here tonight that lacks confidence, you need to understand that God will strengthen you. He will strengthen you, he will work with you, he will bring the right people to you, he'll do and give you the things that you need. He will not leave you out there on a life raft just by yourself. God will find a way to get to you and he will show you a different way. But you've got to put your trust, like it says here in Psalms 103, 103, it says, know that the Lord, he is God. It's he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people in the sheep of his pasture. He is literally here tonight to bring people home. He's asking, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for tonight? What is it? What sign? I don't believe that we're looking for signs here tonight. We're asking people to do this by trust and do this by, a, by faith. Things that you can't see. It's not going to be the right time. It's not going to be the perfect time by your watch. It's by God's watch. What is it going to take? When are you going to begin to be, take and forgive others? When are you going to begin to literally you know what, put your weapons down and begin to trust people again. When are you going to believe that you can be healed by God? When, when you can truly, truly be healed by God? When are, what is it gonna take? When is it gonna start? God is saying it can happen here tonight, right here, right now. There's gonna be people that are going to say to you, it'll never happen. It didn't happen for my brother. You know what, we went and we prayed and prayed and prayed but it, it didn't happen. My brother still passed away. But you know what? Those prayers didn't fall to the ground. Those prayers lifted that maybe that brother up. Maybe you have no idea what a difference it made in the people in the prayer circle who maybe some of the doubters were sitting there going, well, you know what? I didn't think he was going to make it anyway. Well, you know, the amazing thing is how do you know where he made what? He might be in heaven just because the people came together and prayed. He's probably better off than the rest of us, right? That's the, kind of, that's the kind of faith I'm talking about. We don't know the end. We just know that we gotta begin. This whole thing, this walk by faith has to begin sometime, someplace, somewhere. Why not here tonight? If you wanna have that kind of confidence and you wanna have that kind of full assurance like the word said, you've gotta start somewhere. That's why I keep on harping about this. We have to start as a church, come together and really lift each other up. That's why when we ask for a helping hand to help others, we're really counting on that people are going to come together and do this because it has to start. 
If we don't do it, the church doesn't do it. If we don't come together, if we can't fellowship together, if we can't lean upon each other and trust the Lord that God is going to work through us, then who is? Because it's certainly not going to be this world. This world's going to charge you. It's going to charge you for your health. Think about your medical bills. Think about all the things that you have to pay for. The world just wants to charge you till you're bankrupt. God doesn't want to do that to you. God wants to replenish you. He wants to work through you. That's when it, you understand that it's got to start somewhere. Why not start here tonight? He wants to replenish you by blessing you and giving you the confidence. Even if it doesn't work out in this world, you've got a place in the heaven. Because like I said in the beginning, it all starts when the minute you are born, we all are dying. We're all dying of something. I want to take and I want to live. I want to give that gift out here tonight. I want to give that invitation out here tonight. Anybody by watching this by Facebook or YouTube or anybody in here, I want your beginning it to start here tonight. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. That's anybody in here that's not feeling quite up to par I want you to understand, God will take you just the way that you are, yes and amen. He has a place for you. He wants you to come. He wants you to be a part of it. He wants you to be a part of this kingdom. He wants you to get rid of all the doubts, all the insecurities. He wants you to begin to think and believe that he can make a difference. That's his promise. But when God makes a way, it's a real way. It's meaningful. And it's, you know what, and it's enduring. You can endure anything through Christ. You can endure it when you have a belief system, but it has to start here tonight. Just a couple more verses and then we're done. And, I, I, and the question is, what does it mean to walk with God? And I thought it would be very, very fitting to take Genesis 5, 24. It says, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. That's not going to be for everybody. That God isn't just going to take and lift you up. You know what? God is going to expect you to live by faith. And some of us are going to have to walk by faith. And God isn't going to just pick us up and take us out of here. You know what? What God is going to do, God is going to give you all the, all the tools. He's going to give you all the provisions. He's going to give you a way to live your life in a way that you can make a difference. And you're going to be here for a while, some of you. So why not let it be productive? Make your life a productive life. Let it be a life that's fulfilling other people who need your help. There's somebody in this place tonight that needs you. God's not just going to lift you up like Enoch and just take you out. I'm talking about people that are going to be here for a while. You are valuable enough to God that he is going to use you. So be used by God. Have faith to be used by God. Trust in him and have faith that God will take and use you. And it may be for a while. And God is going to give you the ability to endure whatever it is. You're going to have lean times. You're going to have fat times. You're going to have times when you know what you're going to have more than you know what to do with. And God will say, I'll, I know a way to get rid of it. And I'll give you more. God is going to show the givers that they can be cheerful. You know why? Because it's good to give. It's good to give and do it with a cheerful heart. The word tells us that. Some of you are going to be doing this for a long time. Some of you may only have a, a few minutes, a few days, whatever it might be. Make it count. Make it count for something. Micah 6, 8 says, He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord? Hebrews 10, 22, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled once again from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. All these things I've talked to you about tonight is something that God wants to do for you if you have faith enough to trust him and take it to the next level. I'm going to ask that if we have um, Anthony, we're going to close out. 
But I just want to just uh, talk to you just a little bit more about how to take and make your walk a key. Your walk with God has to be uh, just, just, I, I'm, I'm looking for a word that just, when I say key, it has to be on point, your walk with God, when you begin to just completely surrender everything over to him. It's got to be a key, precise moment when you finally flip the switch and say, this is it. I'm not going back over here anymore. This is where I'm going, and I'm going to stay there. And the only way you're going to stay there is you need to ask God for help, and I, you need to do it tonight. If you need to get that help, if you need to get that reassurance, to be full of that reassurance, and, and that key on-point decision needs to be made that you are going to live your life as a Christian, you need to walk up here tonight. You need to come to the Lord tonight. You need to say, this is it. I need your help. I need to be on point. I need your help. You can do whatever you want. Genesis 5, 16. Walking in the Spirit. I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You want to talk about being on point and being, you know, a key moment in your life? It's when you can take lust and all the flesh and all the immoral and all the things that keep you separated from the Lord. You know what? When you can put that aside and be on point and saying, that is it. I accept my walk is here tonight. I'm going to begin to walk. I know I'm going to have some up and down, but I know that God is going to go before me. And when you have that kind of reassurance, like these two people are up here right now, they are saying, you know what? I need help. I need your help. Bring honor and to glory to God by being obedient, thankfulness, humility, faithfulness, prayer, relying on him. You know what? Being selfless, consideration for others for the sake of bringing them closer to Christ. These two right here have the ability to take and just knock walls down once they begin to receive the help from the Lord. After they receive help from the Lord, they're going to have the mind of Christ. They're going to have the ability to understand that, you know what, there's nothing they can't do. You know, there might be a few more of you that need to come up here. There might be a few of you that are dragging yourself in here tonight. You need help. That's why this church is seeking God's glory. That's the namesake of this church. We sing about his glory. If you need help, don't be afraid to come up here and get underneath this glory spout. We're almost done. Do you really want to walk back out there yourself? Do you, or do you want to have a little piece of heaven? A little bit of peace of heaven that, that surpasses all understanding. Just come to the Lord. Acts 4.13, the name of Jesus, forbidden. Can you imagine that? Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. When you have been with the Lord, and this is how we're going to finish this out tonight. When you know that you have enough enough, I, I guess, boldness to come up like these three did and asking for help. When we know that, you can be an uneducated person. Me. You know what? I didn't pay attention in school. And, you know, and it's been a struggle for years to be able just to be able to come up and do what I do and try and do it in a way that brings, you know what, the Lord happiness. You know, how do I do that? By faith. You can do the same thing. You can take an uneducated person like, you know, maybe you, maybe you, and, and God will say, you know what, put that aside. I'm going to give you so much confidence. I'm going to give you the ability. Just be obedient. Be obedient to me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give an invitation right now while these three are up here tonight. This uneducated guy who's full of assurance that Christ is speaking through me right now. This has nothing to do with me. This has all to do with God, but a but God situation. 
The invitation is this. If you've never given your heart over to Jesus Christ, if you've never, ever, ever literally just completely surrendered to Jesus, I want to give you an invitation that is a, it will last forever, all the way into heaven. This is an invitation. It's, you know what? It's salvation. It's something that, you know what? That the devil can't mess with you no more because you have the name of Jesus. It's all over you. The blood of Jesus is all over you. And the thing is, that brings life. And tonight, there's an invitation for anyone in here tonight that has never accepted. Or if you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can do the same thing. The invitation is just completely surrender. Is there anyone in the house tonight that wants to surrender their heart to Jesus? Is there anyone in here tonight that wants to completely surrender their life over to Jesus? Not seeing any hands. We're just going to, I'm going to ask you to stand up if you would. And I want you to know that your journey begins tonight if you choose. We're going to pray for these three. And if there's anybody else that quickly wants to come up and asking God for help, you can do that. Any, anything that you're dealing with. If not, we'll just pray these ones here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The altar is open. Revival begins here tonight. Just lift up your hands. Just hold your hands out. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that God, that we would just come together as a church seeking God's glory. We just come tonight, Lord, and we just ask that you would just place in each every one of these uh, loved ones your glory right now. Just glory come upon them right now. Glory and blessings come upon them right now. Healing right now, Lord. Right now, restoration, whatever it might be, reconciliation, revival, whatever it might be, Lord God, we just trust in you. We They came here asking for your help, and I know, Lord God, that they're going to walk back full of confidence, restoration. Right now, those tears that I saw in the beginning of the service, I can just see right now completely just being wiped away by the hand of Jesus. God is going to help you and restore you, and you know it, and it's happening right now. I can feel it all over you right here, right now, that God has given you a clear, just a mind. Your mind is just being clear that he's given you the ability. I can see peace all over you right now. Peace.